Coming up, after a smash hit that would become a, a bona fide catchphrase of the 80s, still lives on, this classic rock singer decided to record a solo song with his uh, band's future unsure. The song would become a top 10 hit in 1984 and would become a checkpoint of his life in that moment. Coming up next, the legendary singer tells us about the conflict of stepping out on his own and the story of this just nostalgic, beautiful 1984 hit on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you spent hours upon hours at the record store growing up or even now, you're going to dig this channel. Make sure to subscribe below right now to be a part of this music community. Click the bell so that you don't miss out on our latest stories and our interviews. We also want to invite you to our upcoming event, Professor of Rock Live. Uh, this is a live event with a legendary performer uh, doing their greatest songs, telling their stories. Very intimate. You can get tickets at the link below. We also have a Patreon that you're going to want to check out with even more content that helps us keep this a daily channel. So we're introducing a new series today. Really excited. I'm going to call it Solo Venture. The wonderful adventures of lead singers who leave their bands for a time to pursue a solo song or album, but to come back after that to their band. So that's the criteria. They fronted or co-fronted a major band and then released songs or albums and then came back. Uh, future episodes are going to include Stevie Nicks, Freddie Mercury, Steve Perry, Lou Graham, many, many more. Our inaugural episode is going to be Dennis DeYoung, formerly of Styx. In 1983, Styx took a pretty big risk, one that would divide the band when they released Killeroy Was Here and uh, the single Mr. Roboto. Killeroy Was Here was the 11th studio album for the band. It was a concept album of sorts and a rock opera about a future world where rock music is banned. It was named after a famous World War II graffiti tag, Killeroy Was Here. It would end up being the final album of original songs released by the classic lineup of Sticks, you know, with Dennis DeYoung, Tommy Shaw, J.Y. Young, and the brothers John and Chuck Pinozo. Uh, two hit singles came from the concept record, the aforementioned Mr. Roboto, that hit number three, and of course has become a pop catchphrase from the, uh, the 80s that seems to pass on to every generation. There was also the power ballad, Don't Let It End. That peaked at number six. It's one of those hidden gems. Again, this musical direction wasn't really popular within the band, even though it was a big hit. Uh, the band released a live album after that called Caught in the Act. And the future of Styx uh, from that point on was not guaranteed. Both singers, Tommy Shaw and Dennis DeYoung, would end up releasing solo albums. Up next, Dennis DeYoung tells us the story of his solo hit, Desert Moon. On Desert Moon. From the conflict of Mr. Roboto to the story behind this 1984 top 10 hit, and then how he got back with sticks going into the 90s. Desert Moon, that was actually his lone top 10 hit, and what a song, one of my favorites from that era. It's one of the most beautiful and the moving songs of 84. You'll want to hear the story fr straight from him, so let's get into the interview. Here is Dennis DeYoung with the story of Desert Moon. This is different. You're wondering who I am. Secret, secret, I got a secret. So we do it. And um, time for a single. And... People said, man, Mr. Roboto, that's a hit record. It's so catchy. It's so blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? See, I don't know nothing. Remember I said, nobody knows nothing. That is not a hit single. I said, you tell me at the end when I'm yelling, I'm Kilroy. I'm Kilroy! 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 How did, who, what? Why did he do that? How does that make any sense? So people kept up and up, and I said, no, it's record company. That's pretty catchy. It's either that or don't let it end. I contend if we'd have released Don't Let It End first, there would have been almost no controversy about the Kilroy Project because 
Sticks fans would have heard Don't Let It In, like you, and got what you wanted, right? Oh, there's Dennis singing a love song. Okay, great. Um, but we, we took the chance. Hey, I, I loved it. Of course you did. How old were you? In, how old were you? I was seven years old. Star Wars and all the things that I was into, this was like perfect. I wrote it with you in mind. I didn't. But anyway, <laughs> I thought I was, you know, you, you know like uh, uh, Dr. Seuss. Ooh, he's thinking the big thinks. No, nope, there were seven-year-olds going, Domo arigato, mister. That's what it ended up being. And the whole concept went out the window. That's the story of how Mr. Roboto was conceived and, oh, the technology bit. See, the most important line in Mr. Roboto, above everything, the problems plain to see too much technology, machines to save our lives, machines to humanize. Machines to humanize. That was the central point of the story because the story was about censorship, technology, and how they're going to come together. So there it is. I come home from Japan. This is the catalyst now. And I see a PBS documentary about factories and technology, 1982. And there's this giant kind of warehouse and all the machines are dun, 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 dun. There's no people. One guy's in there. He gets ready. He walks out of the, to leave the building and he reaches back in and turns all the lights off in the, in, in, in the room. And what do you hear? He said, the machines keep working. And I looked at that and I went, oh my God. Yeah, that's what can happen with technology. Humans, eh, we need some. They get gas, they get acid reflux, they drink too much, don't need them. Um, and so I put all those ideas together primarily because all the people who worked in those factories were the people I loved and grew up with. So my, my comment on uh, technology was not about where it's gotten, although I thought work in this lead, like today, you think I foresaw this? If I did, I'd have a lot of stock in, uh, in Microsoft. So I, I just thought, well, this is going to kill jobs for people I love. And that's, that's how it came about. Very talented people came together to make that what that is. And that video, um, remember, it was before MTV. I, we didn't know there was going to be an MTV. So, you know, it, it, I think it's uh, it, it stood the test of time. So there it is, you know, and um, I think but one, one misstep. Lavender jumpsuits? What the? <laughs> I'm just a man who needed someone and someone to hide. I remember walking in and seeing lavender jumpsuits and I went, really? It's lavender. Ooh, the rock star. Lavender? <laughs> yeah. Even Prince knew to make it purple. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Is this the train to Desert Moon? Well, Desert Moon, 84, let's talk about that solo song, because I've always loved that song. Top 10 hit from your first solo album, the same name. Yeah. Number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, number 7 in Canada. And Desert Moon, my interpretation a little bit is describing an imaginary place from your past and your kind of your aching, your nostalgia to return to it. Tell me about that song. What do you remember? Yeah, it's an old theme. You, you know, you never can go home. Um, the desire, which is really what my audience is based on. I mean, I still tour and people come and see me. It's all based on one simple idea. Why can't I be 16? Why can't I find that place where I felt loved and protected and without responsibility? This is everybody. When I wrote this song, Ozzy and Irving came to me and said, they're doing a movie called Dune. Stingmeister's in it. I said, okay. They're looking for a song for the thing. So I started, I started reading the book. I hate it. <laughs> My wife loves this kind of stuff. I have page 150. Oh, there's like a whole thing, but the that and this, I don't like it. So I start thinking, well, there's 
It's a desert planet. And there's all these moons. I start writing a song called Desert Moon. I start writing. Then I get a call. I said, they already got somebody. So I had this idea, Desert Moon. Was all she said. But I knew. And I was thinking in cinematic terms, right? The opening, and is this the train to Desert Moon was all she said, but I knew I'd heard that stranger's voice before. That stranger's voice before. That's cinematic. That's, I'm telling you, I'm, you've already seen, you know what that is. You're seeing that. She was standing in the rain. She was standing in the rain, trying hard to speak my name. They say first loves never run dry. No rhyme. It's, it's just setting up this meeting. Um, and then I wrote the song, and um, should have been a stick song, you know. But Tommy Shaw quit. You know, he was he was having some problems with the drugs and alcohol by his own admission, and he he ran off and quit, leaving the the four of us going, "What? Wait, this is sticks. You would quit this band." So I wrote it and recorded it, and uh, then we did the video, which is, I always said, you know what? The video's as good, maybe better than the song. I, I used to think that, I said, that's pretty good. She moved to Chicago about a year ago. You didn't keep in touch? Jack Cole, my buddy, we did three videos together. Um, him and, geez, Smith. I can't remember his first name. He was the writer, and he took what I'd written and he came up with this, um, what MTV used to call the little chill, like the big chill was the movie of the time. I'll be right back. The big chill, a Lawrence Kasdan film. Somebody returns to his hometown. And um, it's just a marvelous video. It really is, it's very cinematic. Good to have you back, man. How long are you gonna stay? Matches the song in that regard. It, yeah. I mean, the song kind of has a narrative style of a novella. Like, yeah. love the storytelling. And one of my favorite lyrical sections is, the waiter poured our memories in a tiny cup. We stumbled over words we long to hear. Words we long to hear. Well, the tiny cup reference too, there have been three or four great artists that have used the cup. I mean, obviously, Paper Cup, John Lennon, Across the Universe. And then Don't Dream It's Over, Neil Love Finn. This. And Desert Moon, just beautiful. We talked about the dreams we'd lost or given up when the whistle caught the night. I mean, come on, that's poetry. Very inspired stuff. Yeah, I, I am. I have to say, I'm very proud of those lyrics because I just got the chills when you were, uh, when you were, you know. In other words, look, <clears throat> you think I'm a big shot? You think I, I, I don't get excited when I, when you, I don't even know you. You got, <laughs> you got your grandpa's hat on and the, and the glasses. <laughs> when you tell me, you read my lyrics back to me, and I know. I, I did it. You did. I wrote that, and look at you, because it is poetic in some mm -hmm. ways. And I'm not a fan of poetry, but it, it tiny cups, it's espresso. But it's all, how do all your feelings get into something small? Memories in a tiny cup. And you know that whatever it was that was ain't. More. And it's the sadness and the joy that come together in that song. Pass and, time moves on. and you know, can't go back. Can't go home again. Because that person's gone. Forget about the locale. Just as long as and at the end, he gives the car which was symbolic of letting go to his kid brother. 
Do you know where you're going? I don't know. That's the symbolism. He says, well, like to stay. I ain't here anymore. You keep the car. I don't need it anymore. It's here. I'm not. What are you waiting for? Get out of here. When Show Me the Way from Edge of the Century came out, this was a monumental moment, not just for you guys, but for Styx fans, for me, because this was when the music had completely changed. Ugh. We went from the 80s to the 90s, grunge, alternative, hip hop, dance music, all those things were taken over. And to have a song speak to our generation of going through really the first war that I, I knew as a kid, because I was born in 76, so I, I didn't know Vietnam. Yeah. But desert storm that I've lost my faith. Show me the way. it was a scary thing for my generation to watch that on tv this is when yeah. 24 hours <laughs> news had started coming out and things started getting crazy but did you know at that moment that that was pretty significant as i've said nobody knows nothing and i would like to tell you <laughs> that my technology song um predicted ai and that show me the way, show me the way was written before Desert Storm. My son had been being bullied. And he's like 10. And the actual premise of show me the way is simple. How does this whole thing work? Would somebody tell me how this, this thing, the world, the peoples, how this, is there a is there a guidebook? That I wake up each morning and turn on the news. So it's the question. Maybe Ezekiel will come and deliver me of a pizza. <laughs> I don't know. So I looked at my son. I wanted to help him. He, he had been, when he was born, he had complications at birth. And we had to go to Chil Children's Memorial Hospital for the first week with him. So, you know, he had a, he's, uh, he had a rough life. And the guy in the song is saying, man, I want to believe. Show me the way. You know, I want to believe, but I'm confused. And, and the operative song is, and if I see the light, should I believe? Tell me how well I know. Well, false gods appeared to me and I won't know. Well, if the real deal shows up, I'm confused. confused as the saints turn into sinners. Human beings want to know the, 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 the ultimate question is, why? That's it. That's the question, isn't it? How'd this happen? Oh, you know what I mean? And that's the ultimate question. There are no others. All others pale in comparison. Nobody's got the answer. Anyone who claims they had the answer are looking to get money from you somehow. So they're looking to get something from you. Cynical, I admit, yet, because all great, all the great religions are run by humans. And I'm, let me just point this out. They don't seem to be too trustworthy humans in general. Brajols, poo through the universe. It's the problem. It's not God per se, it's all the people. Look, if he created us in his image, right? I'm thinking, Ernest Borgnine or Salma Hayek? Which one? So when Styx won on hiatus after Kilroy was here, both singers released solo albums in 1984. The results? Tommy Shaw took the song Girls With Guns to number 33, and his album went to number 50. Dennis DeYoung took Desert Moon, the song, to the top 10, and the album to number 24. Hey, leave us a comment about Dennis DeYoung and this 80s classic, Desert Moon. Ah, just love this song. What are your memories of the song? Uh, share that below. And your feelings about 1984, my pick for the greatest year in music history. I know I've said it before many times. What do you think? What's your favorite year? Let's get a discussion going. And don't forget to watch our episode on Mr. Roboto, where Dennis tells the story of that. We'll link to it below. Make sure to subscribe below if you like this to never miss an interview or a video. And make sure to get tickets to our live event below. Look us up on Patreon, the merch also. We've got the 1984 Vintage Years Collection, which you could get right up here. 
make sure to do that. That helps us keep it a daily channel and keep the music alive. That's, that's really the whole goal. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk to you soon.